Hello friends, it is I, Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when polymer clay and piggies meet. Got my clay rolled out. I have got this really cool uh, clay cutter. I found the file on Etsy and then printed it on my 3D printer. It's like a neato moth or something. I'm going to try two different colors of this little piggy. I'm going to try glisten and twinkle and see how the interference pigments look over black polymer clay on these earrings. So let's go. First, I'm just going to make sure that I don't really contaminate the clay, so we're gonna just pretend that that is that size and that's that size. I'm going to cut off the rest because that'll be rolled up into a different color. I'm cutting my clay right on a ceramic tile because I can put it directly into the oven on the tile. See, these are good for fluid painting and for clay. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut around the moth here to get rid of my excess clay. Obviously, I'm not getting rid of all of it, and that's no big deal. So, got my guys there. I can kind of see the outline. And then we'll do real close on the other side. I rolled my clay out on a pasta machine. That's setting four, I think, though my pasta machine is quite garbage, so um, that may be quite wrong. Okay, so I've got my other clay there. Here we go. So we're going to start with, start with Glisten. Glisten is my fave. I'm just using a standard paintbrush. This is a five, eight, five eighths flat. I'm going to dip it and then I am going to dust it along the top. Isn't that pretty already? Just really work it in circles until I know that it's nice and evenly applied. Let's see here. And we're good right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that first one. And apply even pressure. I did not apply enough pressure. Or my clay is too thin. Actually, my clay might be too thin. So what are we gonna do about that? Well, there's just a few things. Let's try this half. And let's try getting there may be some bubbles here, but hopefully not bad. We'll try and see what happens here. that that's gonna be a little too thick but let's find out the only way you know is by trying and failing so if I fail it's okay it's clay I can reuse it I'm gonna exert some even pressure with another tile <sighs> really press that in I think this one's gonna be much better. Let's find out. Well, the imprint sure did do good, but got a little piece stuck inside here, which is a bummer. Let's see if I can get it out with an X-Acto blade. It's probably gonna look like crap because I stab it. Let's 
and see what the back looks like. Not cut all the way through. So now we are definitely too thick. That sure is pretty though, so let's try something new. We're going to go ahead and mush this all together and try again. And my experiment of having two shades of Piggy may not work for this today. And they're pretty. To make my life easier, I'm going to slice this up. Apparently get glitter on everything. What else is new? Excess glitter. Where did you go? I mean, I could leave the glitter in if I wanted to, but it's not going to contribute to the effect I'm looking for, so we're just not going to do that. All right, and I'm going to drop just a couple of drops of um, Sculpey Clay softener in here because, well, it's getting a little hard. I think really all that is is some sort of mineral oil, but <laughs> whatever. I already, oh my gosh, look at how dirty my hands are getting. All right, got a bottle of clay. Um, this is getting nasty. Like as nasty as my hands, so I'm gonna put some Windex on my tile here. Get it cleaned off. I'm half tempted to put some on my hands. That feels so gross right now. Oh, so much better. Okay. Got El Cheapo clay roller here. This way I can roll it out um, and have it thicker than what I got with my pasta machine. So I'm thinking I want it like one and a half times this thickness. So we're actually looking fairly decent here for the right size. The right thickness, I should say. Tile again to make it nice and flat. Feels pretty decent. And get whatever this white stuff is out. ombre it so glisten on top and twinkle on bottom it's like a mullet moth yeah it'll be pretty distinct line there. Let's see if I can soften that a little bit. Of course I've got a little divot showing, but hopefully it'll be right like under a line or something. I think that looks good. Right, 
Yep, moment of truth. Oh, really close. It's stuck in the stuck in the little tail again. So next we just clean up the edges. I'll probably do that off camera, but I'm just gonna do it with my X-Acto knife. And then we'll bake it. So I'll put this one aside for now. So I'm gonna cut my plain black here. Except I do want one little piece for gauge of depth, so we'll do that. Set it aside. This is essentially what I'm doing is conditioning my play. Again, because this is just a little bit harder, I'm gonna add some of the clay softener. I'm gonna get the glitter out first. A little goes a long way. And glitter gets everywhere. Herpes of the craft world. Whoever said that was not wrong. All right, got a nice lump right there. The piggies just kind of give the black a nice little sheen, which is nice. Makes it just slightly less black. Just a bit of pearl shimmer, which is quite pretty. I doubt you can see that on the camera, but you can just take my word for it. Oh, there's that white shit again. I don't know what it is, but it's gotta come out. It's hard to keep the roller nice and even. But if your pasta machine doesn't make your clay thick enough, then, well, you're a little SOL, I guess. Let's see, how are we doing here? Oh, pretty much good. I feel like there's an air bubble right there, so I'm gonna try to avoid that. Yep, definitely enough room. What did I do with my paintbrush? Right in front of my face. Okay, so glisten on top. Probably could have knocked that off my brush first, but it didn't. No line again, but it'll be partially, um, I won't be able to tell too well because of the shape of this guy, so I'm going to avoid that bubble, and I'm going to avoid both bubbles. Oh, good. Add a little more twinkle up my head, the wings. It'll be fine. Butterflies don't match perfectly in nature, so everybody's got its own footprint. see this one doesn't want to come out uh oh Houston we may have a problem clay might have been slightly too thick okay kids I think I just biffed this one so 
I'm not going to be dealt with it. Yeah, it's just messed up. It happens. I simply did not get it thin enough. Let's try that again. My clay is definitely getting less black. <laughs> okay. I'm going to dust my tile with just a little bit of arrowroot and an old makeup brush. And we're gonna try this again for the third time. <laughs> I've seen people use cornstarch. I don't have any cornstarch. We use arrowroot in our house, so hence arrowroot. I'm gonna clean this tile too. Actually, maybe I should just put the arrow root right on the, right on what is over there. Still sticky. Of course you get bubbles, kind of part of it. This one is very stubborn. I'll just have to go around that. And I'm ever so slightly thicker. I think that looks good. First thing I'm going to do is place him over wherever, that'd be fine. I'm going to dust the mold. I'm going to start with Twinkle. Try to get roughly the same colors in the same places. And to try to avoid that accident, we're going to put arrowroot on top of the piggies. I really want to jam it in on the tail here since the tail is the problem. Let's try this time number three. Moment of truth, please work. So close, so close, so close. Ah, ripped off the little oh, anger. Here we go. So I'm going to clean these up a little bit before I bake them. Like this one, I've got to make sure these are attached and those two, since those come out really difficultly. Difficultly. It's okay that they're not perfectly identical. Um, I'll end up resining these, I'm sure, with UV resin, uh, just for stability and to like keep them together and stuff. Add a little more twinkle. Oh, so pretty. I'm sure I could add, you know, I could have cut this first out as just solid black clay and then painted, you know, dry brush that's on. That would work too. I just kind of wanted it down in the crevices. Golly, that's pretty. Here they are on my kitchen counter right before baking. So I'm gonna put these bad boys in the oven and we'll see what we've got in a half hour. Here they are all done. So now it's just finishing it with findings and I'm going to do that with UV resin. So I'm gonna turn them upside down. Got UV resin here. I'm gonna put a blob to the center of the antenna. And then I've got these large jump rings. Putting them right in the resin. I'll center them. That looks about right. UV flashlight. That should be done. Indeed. And I'm just gonna put a very thin layer on the back. put these under the nail lamp for three minutes and I'll do a second coat on the back. Next I do a second coat, um, more or less for support on these little legs. 
and then I'm going to put them under the nail lamp for 30 minutes. Get out the bubbles with the torch. All right, and the backs look all nice and domed. So now move on to the front. Here they are after resining, and now I'm just going to add the findings. Obviously, we've got the jump ring that we installed uh, with the UV resin, and that is a permanent fixture now. So I've got my little four millimeter jump rings, and I've got my fish hooks. These are not exactly black, but they're very dark, like an anodized black-ish <laughs> gunmetal, I guess you could say. I absolutely love this color, so I use it frequently on my jewelry. Obviously, you gotta make sure your earring is gonna hang in the right direction, so always be careful when you're putting your findings on. I have made all kinds of earrings backwards. <laughs> all kinds. Okay. A lot of times I'll add beads, but these earrings are 60 centimeters, so they're already really quite large. And I think beads would just be major overkill. Oops. You know what? I'm silly. I don't even need these jump rings. What the heck? I have a cold, so you're just gonna have to bear with me while I sniff. I can just kind of open this up just a little bit, twist it. You always want to twist it rather than pull it apart. And uh, there you go, even simpler, no jump ring. Perfect. Now I'm just going to fix this one and take the little jump ring off and then we'll be good. Here they are. Sure are pretty, don't you think? All color shifting and whatnot between kind of a turquoisey and purple glisten and twinkle. So I hope you learned something that polymer clay does not have to be the same old boring stuff you used to think it was. Guilty. There's a lot of things you can do with it including covering it with your favorite pigments and it doesn't have to be just the interference pigments. You could use any colors you want on any clay color that you want. I just wanted to do interference in black for the first experiment. If you learned something or if you just enjoyed it, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Helps me out a lot. Uh, sorry I've been missing for a while, but I am coming back. I hope you're well. Take care.